What's up everyone, this is Sherk talking, welcome back to my channel. In today's video we'll be farming on episode 9 for the second part of the story mode. Well, this time we start from the last stage, this one has the higher status gets and in the start I didn't think it was so good for farming, but I did find plenty of strategies, some use 3 turns, some use 4 turns, but you can bring more trainees. Talking about the stage, here we have uh, two waves with normal enemies, they are a little mixed, we can see it here, this is the Chimera, they can be instant killer, but not many characters can instant kill this Chimera, Albert will fail, uh, then we have these enemies here, they are weak to elemental attacks, but then we have a dragon, so it's all messed up. And on the last wave we have these bosses, four different bosses, and they are only really weak to lightning, but a little weak to blunt and shadow damage as well. With that said, we do have some good combinations for this, because we need elemental damage, if we can, we can bring lightning as well, but we don't have that many options for lightning. So the first strategy has Rainbow Rangers formation and Gwen. Gwen is the star of this, and also thank you, Tepuen, you suggested this strategy and I'm using this one because of you. So then I am using Gliding Spikes as a turn 1 damage and then Vortex Spike for the third wave. It's an AoE attack and it will do a lot of damage. And then we have here on the top, Joe. Joe will be using her AoE attack only on turn 2, because of Sorbet Flambe helping more later. We don't want her to go with Urpina, our next character that's here on the STR position. She uses Holy Shining's word right on start. And then we have Xenon from the 1.5 anniversary banner. We Noble Cross inherited and on 13, so that he will also go on the second wave. Zeno and Joe clear the second wave, while Urpina and uh, Gwen will clear the first one. We have only one slot for training here in this strategy. Okay, so the Chimera has a lot of HP, very close to 60,000. The other enemies don't have as many, but they are very resistant physically. You need elemental. That's why using a character like Rupina helps so much. And because Gwen is on a jet position, he will kill this enemy easily. Then on the second wave, we have the combination of Xeno and Joe together to kill all these enemies. I'm training Albert because we're gonna use Albert in another stage later. Using fast attackers is guaranteed that we know what will happen. Now, all the better. Four different enemies here. We still have AoEs with everyone. Joe is also inherit El Nino, I forgot to say. Gwen debuffs Endurance. And now we have Mirage Blade, where Rapina is even stronger than her other attack. Well, Nino. Well, we didn't need this. My needles will be enough. So, it's a very fast strategy, but there's only one slot open for our trainees. You may not like this too much. Well, the second strategy still uses Urpina. If you don't have Urpina, you can use Silver uh, with her fast AoE attack, but then you need extra help from the other slots. The good thing about the strategy and some of the other ones I'll show is that you can bring two trainees. As you can see, I have Emperor here and he will be using Double Sun Slash. It's on 7 VP so that he uses it twice and then he uses Sun Flash on the last wave. Imperial Sword is on 14 because I don't want him to use that. Then I have Joe with her El Nino inherited, and you need four turns to finish, but this works. Well, well, again, Urpina is the one that will be killing the slimes, hitting for very good damage on Chimera as well. And then Emperor, you just have to use Double Sun Slash. He's on a Jirit position, so he will always be here to kill this Chimera. The damage is pretty high as well, 38,000 it was. Now it's a little different. What we have is Sorbet Flambe and Emperor using the same attack. Rapina does not attack here. The good thing she has Mirage Blade Plus again for the boss fight. We have to use El Nino with Joe and then Sun Flash with Emperor. As you can see, my trainees are not even equipped or anything, just so that you can understand that this can work without have investment on them. Mm. 
Now we have El Nino. Some flash. And yeah, it's done. Now the last strategy. Still has Rapina. Yes, she's pretty strong on this formation. On STR slot. We have also uh, Zeno on the Dex slot. The same thing. 13 BP for all his skills besides the first one. But then we have Dark. Yes, Dark is very strong here. He will just do what Emperor was doing. He can use Stinger two times and then just keep using Trolling Knives. Okay, the same thing will happen. Rapina will kill the Slimes. And with the help of Dark, she will kill the Chimera. Chimera does not need to be instant kill it. Remember, it has around 60,000 HP without 64. Now it's time for Xeno, again, using Noble Cross. Stinger, does not need to instant kill. The Dragon is even weak to Pierce, even better. Now we have Denal against Augur Battle. Uh, she will use Mirage Blade Plus. Then we have Throwing Knives. Look, my Bartholomew is a trainee, so it's not important here. Mirage Blade Plus. We need four turns. There's no way to do this in three. Unless her trainees are very powerful. But yeah, we are dead. Totally dead. Okay, now with the stage number 925, you can farm a Great Sword. If you want to farm a Spear, well, we can run stage 923. It's not so hard. We have a strategy that also works with two trainees. That is Urpina, Joe, and Dora. Dora is super good here. And Urpina will just help clear the first wave again. A fast attacker just makes things easier. We can bring two trainees on the decks in love position. And the skills are just the same. We just have to inherit or El Nino with Joe. And also increase Sorbet from Bay to 11. Uh, the enemies here are weak to sun damage, that's why Rapina works so well. While being fast attacker, she also hits for the weaknesses. Still not enough to kill them. We still have to use Thunder Blow. Then there's Sorbet Flambe. And Sunflash. Now on the third wave, we have the weakest attacks of all three. Sunflash again, Fire Purification and now Nino. All dead. Well, and for those who don't have Rupina, we do have a different strategy. Use Amazon Raid Axe Formation, bring the nearest Albert in the front, inherit Victor's Blade with 6 BP, Holler Rift with 15, place Final Emperor in the STR position, and Dora too. With that, you have a setup that will work for all three waves. So, having Albert in the front guarantees that he will always use Victor's Blade before anyone else, so that he has a cycle of three Victor's Blade in the cycle. Dora can almost kill all enemies here, but it would depend on having the best setup, the best equipment, the highest status, so that's why I'm using this. Albert sometimes even kill that other enemy there. <laughs> Emperor uses Imperial's Word, kind of overkill, but yes. Now, the last wave, we have Victor's Blade. We may need the help of one of our trainees, I'm not entirely sure, let's see what happens here. Yeah, especially since it reduced my full HP. No, it didn't need. Still. Next stage we can farm is 921 because there is a martial arts weapon here. For those that miss it, some of the SS weapons, you can farm the Meteor Hammer. This stage uses the same strategy as the last one. So, Albert in the front. Dora and Emperor in the back. I don't know why, but sometimes enemies are faster than Emperor. Emperor is not slow. 
Also, the same trick is used so that Albert can use Victor's Blade three times in a row. Even could, uh, Dora could clear that wave by itself. Heroes work here, so they don't fall over as well. Now, last wave, just a combination of all the three weaker AoE. We'll do the trick. Even uses the Monson Slash. <laughs> a second strategy can bring three trinities. Yes, this is the combination of UDX, Matriarch, and the frontline of an Amazon Raid X formation with Shining Glory, and then Leo. Just that, and you have three trainees strategy easily. Okay, so first wave, Matriarch will attack. Leon cannot even attack since he has delay. Shining Lord is extremely strong and will kill them all easily. Then it's time for Leon to shine, so he helps Matriarch save her MVP for last wave. Another very strong attack, 63,000 on the second hit. And the last one. I believe the central enemy will not die, so Leon will have to use the buff cut. And yeah, one of your trainees will have to do just a little small damage to finish. But still, three open slots, very fast, very easy. Now we have the last stage, this one you can farm the new sword if you need. And this one can be cleared by Albert. Yes, we have plenty of enemies, but they have low will and they are all instant killable. And that's the only strategy where you can bring four trainees. And I suggest you train Albert first in the other uh, stages so that he gets a higher intelligence. I am using animal string with him on the middle, but you can also use Rainbow Rangers and place it on the top, but place someone with a very low agility on the agility slot. This one is easier to control since the frontal row doesn't have such a high agility. See, only 25. Easier to control and compared to 50. So the only bad thing about this is that, well, the caps here are pretty bad. You are better farming the Lunar New Year event if you want for now. But still, we can bring four trainees. If you still have characters to train, I don't have many. So this for me is not so good. I prefer to run the last stage to get some meta status. Makes more sense to me. But some people will want more pickaxes to use on Hollystone's caves. And that makes sense for them. Well, that's it guys. This is the last stage for farming. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you want want to help the channel there's also links in the description of the video and don't forget to join our discord server as well i hope to see you soon in the next video bye